Morning. Morning, people. How are we all today? Sorry about yesterday. Mondays are getting harder today, actually. Main thing is the journal's up to date. Anyway, here we go. No, I can see very well. Shazza, Helen, Stuart, Sheila, Steve, Kirsty, Mark, Tina, Lynn, Ike, Betty. I've got sweat in my eyes. There. Sorry, folks, I've been doing a wee bit of labour in the day along with driving. The joys. Who else we go? Hi, Christina. 87, 89. Morning, Ellie. Morning, Fiona. 87. 98. Morning, Lorna. Morning, James. Morning, Barbara. You're number 100 today, so let's get this broadcast underway. It's Indie Truck Davey in the truck. Coming to you today from Aberdeen. Just off North Anderson Drive, where it is a beautiful queer morning and 16 degrees, nearly taps off. All right, so that's your weather forecast for just off North Anderson Drive in Aberdeen. If you want to know what the weather's like where you are, look out the bloody windy. Right, let's get this broadcast underway. We've got a lot to get through. So we'll start today with coronavirus update as we normally do. And we'll batter on to review some of the news from yesterday, okay? So, coronavirus update is the figures for 21st of the 3rd, 2022. Right, According to the Office for National Statistics, 1 in 14 Scots now positive for COVID-19. All right, let's move on. Moving on, Monday started with two main themes in the rags. Putin accused of war crimes in Ukraine, and Sunak is rumoured to be thinking of cutting fuel duty to ease the cost of living crisis. All right, on Putin and war crimes, what Putin is doing is exactly the same as the British and the Americans did in Iraq. But Blair and Bush Jr. are now getting dragged into The Hague and being accused of war crimes, right? At this point in time, Putin has killed less Ukrainian civilians than Bush and Blair did in Iraq. But more importantly, what Putin's doing is exactly the same as what the US and Britain did in Iraq. Now, people, you might not want to understand this or might think, no, 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 we couldn't do that. Aye, we could. It's a military strategy. Crush the people, get the people to dispose of the government. Because a government's primary duty is to look after its people. So, if the people are being slaughtered, the government should walk away to protect its people. And it's a, it's a tactic of war. You carpet bomb a city. Let's go to the Second World War in Japan. We'll wait to get Japan to surrender. Hey, anybody remember Hiroshima? Yeah. Anybody remember nuking Japan to get the Japs to capitulate? Carpet bombing Baghdad? What Putin's doing is no any different from what the US and what the UK would be doing if it was being an aggressor. And I have to tell you right now, if you want to look at history, the US and the UK have been the biggest aggressors on the planet since the Second World War. That doesn't mean what Putin's doing is right. It just means that the press here are making it look as if he's doing something different for everybody else when they're no. And that gets much interesting later on. All right. Now, as to Sunak to cut fuel duty to help struggling uh, households, it's rumoured that Sunak will cut fuel duty by 5p a litre. That won't help as petrol is averaging 179.9 per litre and diesel is averaging 185.9 per litre. Take five pence off and you're still feeling the pain. Alright, now Sunak, Sunak can cut 5p a litre in fuel duty all he wants. The Treasury will still be raking it in in fuel duty and fat. And because the prices are so inflated, the Treasury is taking a bigger cut. So taking five pence off a tap line on fuel duty ain't going to make no difference. None. The Treasury will break even on fuel duty anyway. 
Right, the other headline of interest in the new in the in the news, um, a was in the national newspaper. SNP refute claims by former SNP advisor that NDRF two will happen won't happen in twenty twenty three. The Blackford says it will happen, and at the end of the March at the weekend, um, Emma Harper said it would happen. In fact, they're all saying it's going to happen. The only people are saying it's not going to happen are the bloody Brits. And they're saying that for, why? Well, to try and get us to change our minds and rattle the SNP in the opinion polls. I mean, we've seen that stupid poll for the Scotsman the other day, where it polled its own readers who are all unionists, a thousand of its own readers, to say Scots don't want an independence referendum because of the Ukrainian war. For a start, the Ukrainian war will be finished next year. Davies' prediction, two weeks on Monday. Right, but that's not the point, even if it is a protected conflict. What's that going to do with us? You know? And eh, uh, so, this referendum's definitely on the Cairns folks, and it's got Westminster rattled. And you'll get a wee bit more of that as we get into the report and all. Alright, right, moving on. Monday and Bojo the Clown's up to his neck in it for comparing the war in Ukraine to the Brexit vote. Wow. Even I was gobsmacked at that one. Putin aggressively attacks Ukraine and uh, Bojo says that the war in Ukraine is the same as the UK voting for Brexit. When he talks about UK, by the way, it means England. England voted for Brexit. Northern Ireland and Scotland didn't. In fact, the only pe people in the UK, the partnership that didn't get what they wanted, was the Scots. The Northern Irish, still in Europe. The Welsh out of Europe, the English out of Europe, Scotland out of Europe, even though Scotland wanted to stay. But that's beside the point. The point is, he was talking about freedoms. The British people chose their freedoms. They didn't choose their freedom. They chose to shut the door on the whole bloody world. Wow. Mental. Right, moving on, Monday. It also comes to light that the Department of Transport knew P&O were about to sack all of its UK based staff. Apparently French staff and Irish staff are retained because they're still part of the EU and the EU has workers' rights. What we're actually seeing here, folks, is the start of the demise of your workers' rights here. You can date to 800 seafarers and nobody bats an eyelid. They can date to anybody. Deregulation of the labour market has started. There's a wee boosy Brexit bonus for ye. That's what these stupid Sassanacs voted for. Wow. So, 800 jobs doing the swanee. And nay recourse. The UK government knew that P&O were going to break employment law. Bojo just shrugs his shoulders and say, I got on with it. We'll get to the debate in the Parliament about it last night in a minute. Moving on, Monday, here in Scotland, university lectures go on strike for five days. The strike is over pay conditions and pensions. The fight is with the UK government, who intend to cut lecturers' pensions entitlement by up to 35%. Mere deregulation in the employment market. Your pension contributions mean bugger all now. Kiddies, there's no European workers' rights and European laws to stop them from stealing the pension that you've spent the last 35, the last 35, 40 years build, build, uh, building up. Ah, here's Brexit, another Brexit bonus for you, deregulated um, labour markets. Moving on, Monday, it's reported that Glasgow City Council still have 225 million of equal pay settlement to make. This has turned into an SNP bad story because Glasgow has an SNP council, but it's actually a legacy issue that Glasgow SNP council actually took on after Labour had spent years in the courts trying to pay women equal right, equal wages. All right, but we've got the Tories and the Red Tories banging on in the Glasgow City Council Chamber and in the press saying, SNP bad, 225 million still to be paid out. They need to find the 225 million and the half a billion bill for this lies squarely at the door of the zombie party, the Labour bloody party. 
Right, moving on. Monday, Tory UK Energy Minister Greg Hand wants the Scottish Government to rethink its energy policy to include nuclear. Mr Hand says the Scottish Government should reconsider new, um, new nuclear plants as part of the energy strategy going forward in light of the war in the Ukraine. Is Mr Hand fucking mental? Is it, is it just Davy? Boat! Putin just threatened to blow up nuclear plants all over the fucking Ukraine and this spire wants to build them. The Ukraine war should be a warning to us all not to look at bloody nuclear at all. But he, he is a Tory, he is a member of the, the cabinet, so he's as thick as fuck. It means he's went to eating, which means he's eating his own brains and stuck his head right up his own ass. Anyway, the Scottish government said no. Ah. Uh, Fuck you, Mr. Hans. Right, moving on, Monday. It's uh, reported that a mental health charity, SAMH, SAMS, um, is the victim of a cyber attack. The attack targeted phone lines and email accounts. The charity's chief executive, Billy Watson, said it's mind-boggling that anybody would want to attack SAMS. <laughs> We got a bit of comedy in there somewhere, folks. The ants make my blood vessels pop. All right, hey, let's move on. So, hey, somebody's somebody's tried to hack Sam's. Hey, a good read the emails I'll make. Hey, <laughs> moving on. Monday, hey, stuff shop. Yellow Tory Alex Cole Hamilton lays out what the the Fib Dems want done about the cost of living crisis. The irrelevant little twerp was on the press giving us the details of what the Fib Dems would do because the Fib Dems are no having a spring conference. Mr Cole Hamilton tells us it's because of Covid but the real reason why the Fib Dems are no having a spring conference is because apparently it's costing a bloody fortune to, write a, to rent a telephone box to put them in. You know, you can't just rent a telephone box in a street corner for buttons these days, you know, kids. Anyway, Cole Hamilton, what does he want? He wants the Scottish Government to give another 20... Um, yeah, sorry. He wants a VAT cut to 17.5%. He wants a windfall tax on big energy companies. And he wants the Scottish Government to give another £250 million for councils to offset council tax rises. But you see, this was yesterday. And Mr Cole Hamilton doesn't realise that every single council in Scotland had set its council tax rises last feckin' Tuesday. Spanner. But he has a stuff shirt. He has irrelevant. His party's irrelevant. But the BBC gave him a segment. A wee segment. Just so that they can kid on he still exists. Right, moving on, Monday. Um, Monday. Nazamine uh, Zagari Radcliffe gives a press conference in which she rips the Tories um, a new bahookie. Miss Radcliffe says it's taken six Home Secretaries over six years to get her out of, Ir out of uh, Iran. And she says it could have, she could have been home with her child six years ago if the UK had just paid their debt. And she was demanding to know why it took six years for the UK to cough up money that they owed to the Iranians. Leaving her and many other dual nationals language in, in jail. Well, you know, eventually the, the the reason why she's been released is because, you know, her husband kept at it and shamed the UK government into it. And when he, so that's what happened. And when Liz Truss became foreign secretary, she meant let's just pay this 400 million quid. There's another reason for it, of course, folks. And a, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Iran is just, to have, is just about to have a miraculous recovery in its international relationship with the West. Do you know that? Do you know why Iran is going to have a, 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 remarkable, a, a remarkable recovery in its international relations with the West? Because Iran's got something the West want. Oil and gas. And if they're going to cut Putin out the loop, they're going to need more oil and gas in the marketplace for them to buy. And Iran has got oil and gas. So international relations with Iran are just about to become super duper wonderfully cosy. Ah, isn't that convenient? Anyway, Miss um, Radcliffe, uh, Mrs Radcliffe spent six years in jail for bugger all, but the minute Putin 
invades Ukraine and they want to cut Putin out of the oil market, then all of a sudden Iran's getting their 400 million quid and Mr. Gary, uh, Mrs. Gary Radcliffe gets to come home. Yeah. And as I say, over the next few while you're going to see that the Iranians are going to be made most welcome and international relations with Iran are about to get bloody wonderful. Right, moving on, Monday. And in Europe, the EU and the US are about to enter into talks over sanctions in Russia. The UK are locked out of the talks, eh, thanks to Bojo the Clown and his stupid gub comparing the Brexit vote to the war in Ukraine. So, little England just got even littler because they've been cut out of the talks. All right. Um... Also Monday, Germans signed deal with Saudi Arabia to cut uh, um, uh, to get more gas from Saudi Arabia. The gas will be um, liquid petroleum gas and will be shipped to Germany, who don't have LPG receiving terminals. So the Germans signed a deal with Saudi Arabia to get more liquid petroleum gas, and they don't have anywhere to put the bloody stuff when it's shipped to them. Ah well, moving on Monday. Um, Councils warn that a remote and blended learning could make a comeback as COVID, COVID rips through the school estates. Uh, Dumfries and Gallery, City of Edinburgh and Fife Council are all talking about moving to a blended learning model. How that's going to work when mum and dad are back at work instead of working from home? Bloody don't. Hey, that'll be an interesting one. Moving on Monday, and the Dnipro kids are still in Poland. Um, is anybody surprised at that? I was talking about this on Friday. They ain't getting here until a bit of papers arrive for Ukraine. And hey, guess who's at war? Ukraine. No time to look into wee bits of paper while the shells are raining down in your napper. This is cruel, callous, and it's exactly why we have to get away from little England and that's House of Thieves and Carpet Baggers. Eh, 52 kids, or 49 kids and their house parents stuck in bloody Poland for a bit of paper that's not forthcoming while the bloody capital of Ukraine is being shelled. The heartless one, Pretty Patel, strikes again! Except for this time it's no letting um, refugees or asylum seekers drown in the English Channel. Right, moving on. Monday, it's supported that the UK um, it's supported that UK defence analysts say that Scottish independence would affect the security of the UK and the wider world. This comes after Bojo the Clown tells Tories at an empty auditorium here in Aberdeen at the Scottish Tory Party conference that now is not the time for a referendum due to the situation in Ukraine. There's a Davy says here. Davy says it's a definite need to get out of this union right now to get rid of these nuclear weapons in the Clyde. Uh, in the Clyde. And that will bring us on nicely to the next segment before we move on to what papers have to say. Right, Monday. Um, oh, well, nearly there. We've got one more article, then we'll get to the stupidity of what's going on in the world. Monday, MPs in the House of Thieves and Carpet Baggers um, have a debate on p os behaviour. There was to be a vote at the end of the um, debate on fire and be higher. Right, now the whole House condemned P&O and the vote is held. The outcome of the vote doesn't it bloody matter. The government's not being binded to it. And they intend to deregulate the labour markets. That's why P&O are only finding themselves in court with the UK government who are breaking procedures when it comes to laying people off or making them redundant. Don't know if you're aware of this, folks, but if you are going to make 20 people redundant here in the UK, or uh, because employment law is reserved, you have to notify the government. If you are going to have a uh, lay off more than 100 people, then you have to do a 45-day consultation with the workforce. 800 people laid off. Two clear breaches of the law. Well, turns out one of them wasn't a breach of the law. They did tell the Department of Transport, but they didn't give a shite. Huh? They didn't give a shite what was going on. They knew exactly what was going on. Bojo knew when he was there in bloody Dubai what was going to happen. I dare say he dropped by DNP's offices to have a nice wee chat with him. 
Right, so, non, no, I didn't know what the outcome of the vote was, it was non-binding, non and as I say, the Tories intend to deregulate the labour market here in the UK. Right, moving on, Monday, and over the pond, US idiot President Biden becomes a threat to the UK stroke Scottish security. Biden says Putin is a war criminal and may be about to use chemical or biological weapons in Ukraine. Biden says Putin's claim that the UK had chemical and biological warfare programs is incorrect. Biden's a liar. There was seven USA sponsored bio and chemical warfare labs in Ukraine. Notice I said sponsored by the USA. Seven of them. It wasn't a secret. In fact, Putin actually has called for the UN Security Council to take evidence that he's got on it. Fact is, but they've already admitted they were there. They weren't just there. They were financed by the US and to a lesser degree other NATO countries. All right. Now, why did I say uh, Biden has become a threat when Bojo has been calling Putin a war criminal for two weeks now? Well, the answer to that is quite simple. Putin pays no attention to Boris Johnson or the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland at all. As far as he's concerned, this is an ins insignificant little rock off the, face, uh, off the coast of mainland Europe. But what's interesting about what Biden had to say was, Putin sat up and took notice what he had to say. Why is it a threat to us? Because strategically, I've already told you, if Putin's going to make a strike on a NATO country, it'll be this one. It won't pollute mainland Europe very much, and nobody's going to miss Little England at all. There won't even be a third world war, as I say. Everybody will look on in horror, say, tut, tut, let's get to the United Nations and thrash something out so that nobody else has wiped off the map. Even the Ukrainians are probably likely to bloody survive longer than we are, if this carry-on continues. But as I say, Putin, Putin doesn't rate Bojo. We've seen the way he slagged Bojo off. We've seen the way that he slagged Liz Truss off, the Foreign Secretary. Compared the two of them to fucking idiots. And he, he's already made it clear a million times that I'm aware of on the international stage that the UK has no influence or bearing on the inf international stage. And it has even less now. Why is it even less now? Because it isolated itself, thinking it had a big wallet to wave on the world stage. Well, I'll show you how big it was. How, but you'll see how big Little England's wally is for waving on the world stage this week when major talks on sanctioning Europe, uh, sanctioning Russia, are going on in Europe with the Americans and the U EU 27, and Little England isn't even invited. Biden doesn't like Bojo. Putin doesn't think Bojo. It doesn't rank Bojo. And the EU are fed up taking insults off Bojo. Little England's woolly waving's about to stop as it looks down and realises it's got a pinky winky instead of a woolly. But Biden has become a direct threat to us because if anybody, if Putin's going to take any NATO country out, it's going to be Little England. And unfortunately, our arses are attached to it. And unfortunately, we have their nuclear arsenal on the Clyde. Ah right, well, hope you enjoyed that analysis, because everybody last word there, it's right. Everybody last word there. And I hope you've enjoyed the rants, because I know you like a rant. And Davey's already angry this Tuesday. Right, let's move on to this morning and see what feckin' stupidity is in the papers, eh? Because I'm not in the mood for stupid. Hi, Stephen! Hey, moving on to this morning, what the papers have to say. The Times has put and threatened civilians to break... Uh, Mario Paul's spirit. The US and the UK did the same with bloody Baghdad. The Metro has escaped from Mario Paul. Two US journalists make it out after Putin put a hat on them. The Telegraph has Putin's super yacht faces Caesar in Italy and ministers plea with Sunak to ditch national insurance rights. The I has um, Russian troops um, turn on protesters and apparently anti-war protesters in Russia were open fire on by Russian troops. Um, 
Hey, the Herald has. Scottish independent vote in 2022 would delight Putin. Who gives a fuck what Putin thinks? Scotland's a tiny wee nation. We need to be neutral. We are decent defence force. But if we're going to be in NATO, then let's be nuclear free members and gatekeepers to the North West Passage. So, you know, these are not, these are, not, I mean, Putin would love Scottish independence. The whole world would love Scottish independence. It would take little England's tinky winky off the world stage while they keep fucking waving it and killing people with their stupid mouths. And now that they've no influence in the world stage to kill people, they're now fucking committing a genocide on the people here. Wow. Uh, Putin doesn't care. Uh, I have a bit Scottish independence. Putin already knows that Westminster's a nobody and becoming even less of a nobody. Christ, they've got their own diplomatic service on the telly telling us that this government's killed the UK's influence on the international stage. They're not even second rankers anymore. They're third rankers. The BRICS are where we're headed with the new world order. America and little England better get used to it. Brazil, Russia, India, China are the superpowers of the future and the big markets of the future. Right. Um, the film uh, goes on. Twisted MP killer plotted attacks for years. Um, the killer of Sir David Ames uh, plotted to kill Gove. Kill the wrong one, I think go for it. Right, the rancid had, the rancid had, the rancid, the daily rancid has, MPs murdered a murder suspect, had Gove as target. Went for the wrong one. Right, the only rag the Express has, it's time to um, raise state pensions, Mr. Sunak. Do you know something? I reckon Sunak might just do that. Because most of the Tory voters down that road in Little England live in the shires and they're all pensionable aged gammons. Don't forget they're bigots and racists and all. Um, the National has. Ignorant PM is facing EU summit snub. Too late, he's already been snubbed. And the Scotsman has. Hospitals facing no way up on COVID um, patients, sorry, as COVID patients hit new record highs. And as I say, you know, they're trying to convince us COVID's over. It's a cult. All right, we're losing 22 people a day. The UK is losing hundreds. Hundreds. Right, and the star has. Kamara quits a live TV. Unbelievable, Jeff. Celebrity, uh, celebrity crap. I didn't even bother my ass looking to see what it was about. Uh, I believe Kamara was a football player or something daft like that. What we got? 32 minutes on the clock. That's no bad, folks. Hope you enjoyed today's show. I hope you found it entertaining. I hope you found it informative. As you can tell, Davey's a wee bit rattled today. So, a wee bit of a rant in there. This one ought to share well. <laughs> you like your rants. Right, the usual stuff. When it comes to um, a, the question of Scottish independence, Eyes on the prize, partisan politics in your pockets, get out there and win hearts and minds. Because as we can see with the desperation in the mainstream media and Boris Johnson and the Tory party, they know this bloody referendum's going ahead. I believe Gordon Ross said something uh, something similar yesterday. All right, uh, they know they've no way to stop it. And he uh, actually at this point in time voting for independence and taking the nut jobs in the House of Thieves and carpetbaggers or the eating mess out of the world, half the world stage would do the international community an absolute favour. And I mean a favour. Right, so, that's it. Partisan politics in your pockets. Eyes on the prize. Get out there and win hearts and minds. Support the independent media. Support AYE TV, which Davey's never going to make going out of swearing he does. <laughs> and he put me on after the watershed. <laughs> and that's not how it works with this thing. It's a bit of a streaming service like YouTube. And Steve, uh, Stephen, K uh, Stephen puts all the videos up on YouTube anyway. So if you're looking for a um, to rewatch these programs all the way back, 
Stephen's been putting them up on YouTube now for a couple of years and you'll get them in, in, uh, under hashtag Indie Truck Davey and the search bar in YouTube and it'll bring them up. Indie, Indie Truck Davey and Gordon Ross, Indie Car Gordon Ross. We share a channel and Stephen here in the audience is very kind enough to run that channel on our behalf. Okay, um, where was I? Aye, support the independent media. Okie dokie. Um, and I've got a crowdfunder going through, put through pennies in the pot. And lastly, but not leastly, health messaging. Face coverings and close public spaces. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. When it comes to social distancing, use your nap, but especially right now, when you're in the supermarket and there's 30 or 40 people in there and one in 14 is live with this stuff, that means you're never that far away from somebody that's got it. All right? So when it comes to social distancing, use your numbers. And test and keep testing until they start charging for them. And then nobody's going to bloody well test, are they? Right, you a lot. Have a nice day. We'll be back tomorrow. Don't know whether I'll be in a good mood or a bad mood, but we'll be back tomorrow to do it all again. All right, cheerio.